Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome back to the classroom as we get into our first lesson on leadership. We laid a pretty solid foundation last week when we told you that if you can't follow, you can't lead. So if you came back, that means that we didn't scare you away. We're going to learn a lot through the next few weeks. And now that our focus is properly set through the lens of followership, let's talk about leadership. If you'll remember, we started manhood with one simple rule, accept responsibility for your actions right or wrong. We called it the first rule of manhood. So it's no mere coincidence that the first rule of leadership is everything is your fault. Ownership is a key principle of leadership. It is easy to take a bow when you lead your team to victory, but if you can't take ownership when things go awry, you're absolutely useless to your subordinates and your superiors. Air Force General David Goldfein sums up this principle with the title of his writing on leadership, sharing success, owning failure. To illustrate this principle, I want to give you a couple of examples. Uh, first of all, we know the story of the original sin, Adam and Eve's fall from grace. But I want to dig into that story so we can notice something about Adam's attitude when things are going right versus when they're going wrong. In the garden, Adam says that Eve is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. He is excited to see her and all is well. But then they eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And when confronted with his failure, watch closely, Adam spreads the blame around as much as he can. He only knows like God and Eve. So it's 50% to God, 50% to Eve. And he says, God, it was this woman you gave me. She gave me the fruit and I ate it. Now, don't you tell me Adam wasn't a leader because right there at the end of the first chapter, God gives him dominion over the whole earth. Side note, Adam was the first and only man to achieve world domination. But anyways, the first challenge comes to this leader and he blames his leader and his new teammate. And we all know the rest of the story. Now, if we turn 100 or so pages into that very same book, we get to meet a man named Joshua who took a different approach to owning failure. When his army suffered defeat, he immediately took ownership, though he didn't know the true cause of the failure. But Joshua was so burdened with the role of leader that his immediate reaction was to look within. This posture of ownership, uh, it allowed him to receive instruction from his leader who gave him a strategy to reveal that someone in his camp was the culprit. And notice this, he still takes responsibility and he leads the action to eliminate the problem once and for all. Leaders only when we own our failures are we humble enough to receive guidance for moving past them. If you live by the principle that anything that goes wrong is your fault, a shift will happen in your thinking. You will become a little more analytical and employ a little bit more wisdom in your decisions. Once you say, it's my fault, something changes about the situation. Whatever you can fix, you fix it, and usually before it becomes a problem. And then when you begin to see weak links on the team, you don't just talk behind people's backs and say things like, well, he should know better, or I hope he gets it together. You see it as your responsibility to help your peers get better instead of watching them twist in the wind. Here's a news flash: When they fail publicly, it reflects on everyone. Don't assume they know. If they knew, they wouldn't be in this predicament. Conversely, when you get the feedback that tells you that you just might be the weakest link, don't get mad get better. Allow me to give you an example from my life. I worked once on a senior staff. That is a fancy way of saying a group of leaders. Uh, and on the staff, it was understood that our leader made certain critical decisions at the last minute. This was just a given. Yet staff constantly complained that we never knew what to do until the last minute. Now, we all had shared ownership of a repetitive and highly visible process that executed weekly. At times, it didn't go smoothly, and sometimes we'd pass around the hot potato of blame amongst ourselves, but more often than not, we blamed that leader's last-minute changes. So we all knew this event happened weekly, and chaos notwithstanding, certain elements could always be pre-planned. My question eventually to this team of leaders became, if our leader has done his portion at the last minute for this long, then at what point does the blame shift to us for not having everything else in place. Until that point, we had decided everything happening was someone else's fault. So without shouldering any of the blame, we couldn't be convinced to shoulder any of the burden. 
The acceptance of fault drove our decision to change. And understand me, leaders, that acceptance will infect every area of your life that you lead in. At home, if you see everything that goes wrong with the house is your fault, you will take better care of your home. You'll do preventative maintenance instead of blaming the people who you bought it from when something breaks. Within your family, if you take ownership of your children's failures, you'll pay a bit more attention to who and what they're involved in, and you'll make it a point to be a voice of instruction. Don't blame the school system. Don't blame the media. You're their father. Hey, we told you that manhood was deliberate. On your job, if your department is the worst in the company, you knew they were underperforming well before the fiscal year ended. Don't blame them. Instead, see the failures as your fault and you will interview your potential employees with a little more scrutiny from now on. So what if you don't own the company? The ownership attitude will make you run background checks on everyone before making a decision because their failures will reflect on you. Now listen, if your staff embarrasses you, they're your staff, you hired them. When you're tired of being embarrassed, you will examine yourself first and listen to me. Once you know you shouldered the burden correctly and the people around you have not, you have to take ownership of the decision to relieve them of their responsibilities. And hey, senior leaders, if you have a failing leader under you, you promoted him. So you either mentor him or you fire him, but you don't allow the weakest link to make you look incapable of leading other leaders. If there is incompetence in your midst and it goes uncorrected, guess who looks incompetent? You. Start saying it's my fault when something goes awry. And what will happen is you'll hate the sting of blame so much you'll start getting proactive. Don't believe me? Try this on for size. I had a chance to buy a home warranty and I didn't. Now the AC is on the fritz in the dead of summer. That's my fault. Man, I hired this guy who was supposed to be a financial genius. Now I'm broke and all my profits are in his offshore account. I should have done a background check. Dude said he was a good DJ and he only wanted $75 to do our company picnic. Now everybody's offended by the music. That's my fault. This is Jeff's first time arguing a case and it's really important to the firm. And he's just nervous and standing there for the last three minutes sweating in the courtroom. That's my fault. Our truck driver got wasted and plowed through a crowd and now we're making lots of headlines. Why didn't I check him out first? Leaders, this isn't a doctrine of fear. Leaders can't be afraid or they won't lead. This is a doctrine of proactive, sound leadership. While we can never account for everything that will go wrong, and remember, things will go wrong, the ownership attitude helps preventable failures be avoided. When you realize that your name is on it, everything changes. So leaders, join me this week in taking a fresh perspective on how we see ourselves in our homes, in our ministries, on our jobs, our businesses, and in the variety of areas that we're called to lead in. And when we start to take ownership of the things that go wrong, more things will go right. Hey, it's been great sharing with you all this morning. I hope this lesson blesses you. If you're still standing next week, come on back and we'll talk some more. God bless you, leaders.